Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Carrot Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2001 movie titled I Am Sam. Now I Am Sam is a drama that is two hours and twelve minutes long and it was directed by Jesse Nelson and the writing credits are Jesse Nelson along with Christine Johnson and the stars of the movie are Sean Penn, Michelle Pfeiffer, Dakota Fanning, uh, Laura Dern, Richard Schiff, Loretta Devine. Also, I think there's a small part there for Mary Steenburgen. And I believe Ellie Fanning was also making her debut as a three-year-old version of Dakota Fanning's character, Lucy Diamond. Sam Dawson is a mentally disabled man who works at Starbucks. He buses tables and is also a aficionado of the Beatles. Now Sam doesn't live alone. He lives with his uh, seven-year-old daughter named Lucy Diamond, played by Dakota Fanning. And the reason why he's raising the child on his own is because the woman he had an affair with wanted nothing to do with him or Lucy. Now Sam provides a loving and caring environment for her but uh, however she appears to be much smarter beyond her years I mean whereas Sam is mentally backwards Lucy is more mentally forwards she can read at a grade 9 level and uh, she's also a very humble girl because even though she knows that she's smarter than her father she doesn't want to you know create a world where the child upstages the parent now this becomes a eventually a problem with her in school because by the time she reaches seven years old and is in the second grade she um falls back on her grades which grows a growing concern towards parents and higher authorities who kind of put Sam's uh, child nurturing in question now Sam is not like a complete loner I mean he has friends and some of his friends include his his co-workers uh, he has also his circle of friends which are um, are also faced with uh, mental disabilities and um, I think he also is friends with a waitress who works at the International House of Pancakes or to put it into an acronym IHOP and uh, let's oh there's also let's not forget uh, Diane Wiest is also in this movie too. She plays the role of Sam's friend who is agoraphobic but is a, but is a piano playing genius. Okay, um Well, some of the favorite activities Sam and Lucy do with each other is um they like to go to the park and they eat at a local dine and they like to eat at IHOP of course every Wednesday night is IHOP night so to break away one day from the monotony the routine they decide to give big boy as a different environment to eat however though um, the pancakes that Sam is accustomed to was not served on the menu so eventually there's this one scene where Sam eventually suffers from a nervous breakdown because the pancakes that uh, that he's accustomed to at the IHOP was not on the menu so he breaks into a an anger fit and that's not the only scene where he breaks into an anger fit uh, I believe there was a scene that took place at a Halloween party 
where Sam was dressed up as his favorite beetle, Paul McCartney. And he also causes a bit of a scene there too. So then eventually her peers lash at her father, you know, ostracizing him, calling down on him, labeling, labeling him off as a retard. And that does not set very well with Lucy, even though she remains calm about the whole situation. One day at her birthday party, a social worker attempts to take Lucy away from him and he was only allowed a two day a week visitation but he also has to be under supervision. While this is happening a big shot lawyer by the name of Rita Harrison another Beatles reference Rita inspired by the Beatles song Lovely Rita and her last name Harrison of course named after the late great Beatles lead guitarist and occasional vocalist George Harrison decided that she decides that uh, she will settle this case with Sam pro bono although she's reluctant to be put into this kind of precarious situation but uh, you know she also is faced with many challenges herself yes I know what you're thinking why is it that a big shot lawyer who seems to be like the female equivalent to Perry Mason, she seems to win every case, she seems to be high esteemed, really up there, to be faced with problems of her own? Well, when you think about it, she may have problems of her own, but that doesn't mean she may be a big shot, she may be a big success, but that doesn't mean she's invincible she also has difficulties raising her son and uh, eventually by the time the film progresses after learning from Sam about the art of child rearing she also starts to become more confident with raising her kid uh, the film ends with the judge's final decision that Sam was eventually given uh, full access to look after Lucy and also with the help of her foster mother to provide like a mother figure towards her and then we see that Lucy at a soccer game and she is joined by Sam and Rita and the rest of the other or a circle of friends and uh, you know it, it, it has a happy ending and I'm just sort of glad that in the end uh, it had a happy ending in that Sam was able to look after his daughter so you know this this movie really does bring a emotional tear to your eye um, here is uh, my opinion about the movie after watching I Am Sam I actually did fall to tears and it kinda changed my perspective of just how good or or bad our world really is and under the careful direction of Jesse Nelson it shows a very accurate portrayal of uh, life itself and of course it has a share of cringing moments I won't go too much into the plot points but the realism about this movie is just about as good as it gets and you know it's very rare to see a mentally challenged person raise a child on his own and I and I think you know Sam deserves a bit of innovation for that and he did create a loving caring environment to, I mean just think about all the demographics of normal people or people who are often described as normal I mean they they abandon their kids and take off or even denying that they are the father so you know I gotta give Sam a credit for being probably more humane than these deadbeats who you know leave their childs and leave it up to the mothers to look after them so you know I, I gotta give hats off to him you know and to this day and age of civil unpredictability a story where the dominating factor determines what's best for the welfare of the child who is unfortunately caught in the middle also provides some realism. 
performance-wise, Sean Penn was excellent. And, uh, you know, playing a very interesting character in Sam Dawson. We root for him definitely all the way. We laugh when there's scenes that are funny evolving around him. We, we, we feel sorry for him when bad things happen. And, you know, it's paved way very nicely by director uh, Jesse Nelson. And I think uh, he's up there with many great characters who have played mentally disabled characters, including Leonardo DiCaprio's character Arnie in the movie What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Raymond Babbitt, played by Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man, and uh, Tom Hanks' character role, Forrest Gump. And, uh, you know, these, these characters succeed in making us believe that these characters really are mentally disabled but you also take good sympathy for them because they really capture you, they really pull the shackles of your heart and you want to root for them you root the whole time Sam is trying to obtain custody for his daughter Michelle Pfeiffer, I have to admit, she was not really up to par with her other roles from the past. But she does her best and, and pre represents that not all the riches and fame require the love of one's child. And her transformation represents that. And we can all also learn from her. Okay, I guess the one thing that really irked me about this movie is the way the social service department was portrayed that the authorities um, in the past of course many of them come across as being cold unmerciful corporate shrills who just take advantage of the weak link and deprive him of the one person he truly loves and the only person who probably truly cares about him but like in all stories they do serve a purpose is that they do care for what's best for the child even though of course they're going to be frowned upon as having the unflattering reputation as being just tyrants who have known for breaking up families not just for mentally disabled people but just you know parents who seem unfit in raising their child and yes they've had built a reputation of removing children from their homes for reasons whether justified or unjustified they really do have a thankless role not just in the movie but also in real life itself the movie truly deserves to be watched and to really take into deep consideration it will truly have you in tears and it will truly tug at your heart springs the whole way through Sam's not alone in this world, you know, his friends, colleagues, his agoraphobic neighbor also care for him. And the message is quite clear. And I think the theme of this story is it's better to be loved by the simple-minded than to be not loved at all. You know, the, le the moral lessons really, really do come alive there. Uh, aside from the small other things too, uh, the music is definitely excellent. I just wish they actually played the Beatles, playing the Beatles songs, but instead they took various artists doing uh, remakes of Beatles songs. Uh, I believe some performers like the Black Crows, uh, former Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder did a song. And... Uh, I just uh, loved the the classic songs by the Beatles. I just wish that it was actually sung by the Beatles themselves instead of just various artists redoing Beatles songs. But it's still a, a very good movie. I highly recommend it. If I was to give it a scale from 1 to 10, I'd probably give this movie a 9. So uh, thank you very much for listening to my review. Uh, please write back to me. I'd love to hear from you all. Take care of yourselves.
Goodbye.